Item number, SCP-574. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-574 is located within Containment Site 105, which is surrounded by a concrete barrier 3 meters high and 1 meter wide. Warning signs are posted at the edge of the Foundation-owned property. Once per month, a live adult pig, Sus Scrofa, is to be placed within SCP-574. Any additional buildings not being cultivated for study are to be demolished by Mobile Task Force Psi-7, Home Improvement, as soon as it becomes feasible. The interior of SCP-574 is monitored by both cameras and high-definition microphones. Any anomalies in SCP-574's interior are to be reported immediately. Description SCP-574 is a former factory in United States. The exterior appearance of SCP-574 is metamorphic, with over 328 distinct appearances on record. The interior contains three floors, with industrial equipment in varying states of decay. When a subject approaches within 40 meters of SCP-574, it will manifest a campfire near one of its upper windows. If the subject does not continue to approach it, several more campfires will appear, with human silhouettes being visible in the windows. If the subject does enter SCP-574, it will create several signs of human habitation. SCP-574 has been known to commonly manifest broken beer bottles, sleeping bags, clothing, and empty food cans, as well as concentrated deposits of ammonia, urea, and other compounds commonly found in urine. As the subject continues to occupy SCP-574, the floor beneath them may suddenly collapse, causing them to fall into the basement. Upon impact, the basement floor will take on the properties of wet cement and forcibly drag the subject underneath before hardening. When active, concrete within the basement of SCP-574 has been found to be acidic with a pH of 3.5. If SCP-574 consumes more than three subjects in one month, additional facilities will begin constructing themselves around it. These will be support facilities for a factory, such as an electrical power plant, or a market to sell the goods produced within the factory. If allowed to build completely, these structures will become derelict and begin sharing SCP-574's properties. When it was initially contained, SCP-574 was surrounded by two power plants, a marketplace, and the remains of a harbor. If SCP-574 is denied food, these structures will begin manifesting more enticing items, such as silhouettes of women undressing, the cries of distressed animals, and the odors of food and cannabis. SCP-574 was initially discovered on 9-18-1995, when a homeless man called paramedics to it. Upon arrival, the subject claimed he had taken up residence within SCP-574 and had witnessed the deaths of other subjects due to SCP-574's effect. After several paramedics were killed, reports of the anomaly reached Foundation agents embedded in the American military. Containment was successfully enacted by members of MTF Psi-7, Home Improvement. As of 10-30-1995, all witnesses were issued Class C amnestics, and SCP-574 was classified as Euclid. Addendum Interview 574-A Interviewed Subject 574-A Interviewer Dr. Yankovitz Forward Interview taken during initial containment. Begin log. Dr. Yankovitz. So, please tell us how you came to find the structure. Subject 574A. You mean the factory, right? I guess, uh, I mean, it was someplace we all knew about. Good night's sleep, warm, usually kind of dry. Dr. Yankovitz. It was a well-known squatter camp. Subject 574A. Well, not a camp. You see, nobody wanted to live there. There was noises, sometimes, at night. 
spooked the hell out of me when I went there a couple of times. Dr. Yankovitz, why did you go on the 18th? Subject 574A. Ah, shit, now I gotta think about this. Uh, shit. Probably Frank, or his little posse, told me we was gonna be staying up there tonight to talk about something. Dr. Yankovitz, and you went? Subject 574A. They said they had some baked beans, so shit, yeah, I went. Dr. Yankovitz, what happened when you arrived? Subject 574A. Well, nothing much at first. I bummed around. <laughs> on the first floor. Heard a lot of people on the next one up, but I didn't really want to bother with those guys more than I needed to. Dr. Yankovitz, please get to the point, if you can. Subject 574A. Right, sorry. Tend to, uh, ramble about stuff. Anyways, so... I'm bumming around on the first floor and Frank's crew comes down. Frank starts preaching to the dozen or so guys there, talking about a place where we'd never need to worry about cops or gangs or nothing. We asked where it was, and he said we was in it. Dr. Yankovitz, what was the general reaction? Subject 574A, confusion, because that shit didn't make sense. He goes on about there being a lot of new buildings around here and how they was going to make even more for us. Then, he started asking for volunteers. Dr. Yankovitz, please continue. Subject 574A. Sorry, sorry. So, he takes the volunteers and sticks them under this big rusty ass pipe. Next thing you know, they got swallowed up by the rust and the grunk on the floor. We could hear them screaming and breaking. It was like a speaker outside a store. It was horrible. Dr. Yankovitz. I'm sorry. Did it go on for long? Subject 574A. Yeah. Frank tried telling us to chill out because we didn't have to die and we could live for free. But he got shouted down and then a few people got rough. Then the floor started to rumble. People were falling left and right. God. I... They was killing each other, even down there. I saw it. They choked each other before being just drowned in that cement. Frank was hollering his lungs off till the cement set. Fuck. I just wanted beans, you know? Didn't need that shit. Dr. Yankovitz. So that was when you left and contacted the authorities. Subject 574A. Went to the corner store, yeah. Are we done? Please. End log. Closing statement. Subject was issued Class B amnestics following this interview. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-573, The Pied Pipe, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.